Yes, I know that Lauren mentioned in the last video that you'd be getting some stuff from the London Film Festival. <laughs> You're going to get that all throughout this week. Instant out of theatre reactions, reviews to the London Film Festival movies, as well as some interviews from some of the hottest filmmakers of tomorrow. But that's not why you guys are here. You're here to see the Transformers 1 stuff. It's not the greatest Transformers movie ever, contrary to what some people are saying. Now, it's far from being the worst. It's definitely one of the better ones. But this is not a film without its flaws. And yeah, let's discuss Transformers 1 today. Well, we've had that magical 40,000, but we're still on our way to 50. And I continue to ask for your guys' help. I thank all of you who are subscribed, but I still see nearly 90% of you not subscribed to the channel and watching the content. Guys, it's free. It's an easy way for you guys to stay on top of the content that I release and that you're clearly consuming and not subscribing to. So please hit that subscribe button. It helps me so, so much. Please help me reach that 50,000 big landmark. Now back to the video. So first off, let's talk about the general synopsis for this movie. Transformers 1 explores the origins of some of our favorite characters, focusing primarily on the early days of Optimus Prime, known then as Orion Pax, and his relationship with D16, who eventually becomes Megatron. The film dives into their friendship, ideals, and the events that lead them down opposing paths. It's a story of camaraderie turned rivalry, framed in the epic backdrop of the Transformers universe. Lifelong fan here, of course I'm going to say it's epic. What's really exciting about this movie is that it does feel tailored to lifelong fans like this guy right here. Throughout the film, there are plenty of Easter eggs that nod to the lore we know and love, from subtle references to classic Transformers lore to familiar character designs. There's a lot to unpack that seasoned fans will appreciate. It's clear that the creators intended to honor the rich history of the franchise. And to that end, the movie is a success. The heart of the film, though, lies in the relationship between D16 and Orion Pax. Their dynamic feels authentic, and the motivations behind their transformations into Megatron and Optimus Prime, respectively, are well-developed. Nothing here feels forced. You generally understand how their experiences shape them into the leaders they become. This depth adds a layer of complexity that really enriches the narrative. Now, obviously, this is an animation movie, so we do need to address that. Let's talk about the animation and the choreography here. Visually, Transformers 1 is stunning. The animation style is vibrant, capturing the essence of the Transformers universe while bringing something fresh to the table. The fight scenes are well executed and exhilarating, showcasing the power and agility of the Transformers in a way that keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's a treat for both new fans and veterans of the series. And two things I'd actually like to add here. So this is the first Transformers movie, I may be wrong here, but I think ever? at least mainline Transformers movie ever that doesn't have any annoying human side characters as distractions from the stuff we've come in to see, which is big robots hitting each other. And it just allows the showpiece, to, the, 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 the narrative, the showpiece, the action, it just allows everything to center on the Autobots and Decepticons, although they're not called that yet, as it bloody should. So I did say the animation was beautiful, and it is the one thing I thought there was a little bit off. The actual faces of all the robots was a little bit on the humanoidy side. Like when they don't have their, their battle masks on, um, th th their faces didn't look like robot faces. They looked like human faces attempting almost cosplaying as robot faces. So while the body and the aesthetics of the armor and the various limbs and their transformations and Cybertron itself and the city of Iacon all look freaking awesome faces were a bit it, it felt a bit like that old beast wars show a little bit in terms of the facial animations only that was the one thing in the animation where with the animation where i thought you could could have tightened that up a little bit while the animation does shine for most part the plot itself is sadly rather basic and papers thin even for a transformers movie the story doesn't venture into particularly complex territory, and you can see where it's headed from a mile off. This simplicity might appeal to younger viewers, but may leave longtime fans wanting a bit more depth. Another point to consider is that the film lacks major dramatic moments that could elevate its stakes. Without these emotional highs, Transformers 1 struggles to feel truly epic. 
the absence of significant tension or consequences means that even the climactic battles don't resonate as strongly as they probably should have done. You never quite feel the weight of the, of the decisions being made. It's also important to note, the film attempts to tread a very fine line between catering to the hardcores, you know, the generations of pre-existing Transformers fans, and trying to bring in a new audience from the new generation, so a younger audience. Now, while it offers nods for veterans, as I said with the earlier, with the aforementioned Easter eggs and a bunch of other stuff, it does often feel quite childish, which might alienate those looking for something a little bit more mature. The balance isn't quite right, leaving the film feeling like it's trying to please everyone, actually only succeeding in when it comes to the big stuff really pleasing the kids here but don't get me wrong i know people are going to go slam the comment section up but it's a cartoon but it's about ro you know robots transforming into cars and planes i know ultimately transformers is childish but the, the interpersonal relationships felt childish the comedy felt childish the way the battles unfolded felt childish it looked great and because i'm a diehard fan i was on board for it and i was along for the ride but it it very much kept itself in the kiddie realm where if you look at the original movie where optimus bites the dust from the late 1980s that went quite deep <laughs> like people died <laughs> and i'm not looking for necessarily death in an origin story but a bit of a bit of oomph a bit of dramatic oomph would have been nice I suppose the last thing I have to touch on is the voice acting. Look, I think Chris Hemsworth does the best that he can, and he's a perfectly serviceable Optimus Prime. Is he Peter Cullen? Is he hell? Like, obviously not. <laughs> uh, I mean, Peter Cullen for me will always be Optimus Prime. Yeah, that's, that's never going to change. The whole voice cast, you know, your Steve Buscemi's, your John Hams, your Scarlett Johansson's, they're all really good. Like, no one here delivers a phone in performance. It's just not the same as G1. So this is very much me devaluing something because of my own personal nostalgia to the IP, but evaluating it as its own soul thing. Yeah, the, the voice acting is on point here. So how the hell do I score this thing? Because um, it is fun. It is fun, but it's, it's, it's surface level fun, which you know what, maybe after so many goddamn bad Transformers movies we've had this century, maybe surface level fun is, although it's a very low bar to cross, that's kind of the bar, as long as we're not getting the Michael Bay Transformers, it's all good, right? Although, hey, say that, I still defend the first three Michael Bay movies. Yes, including Revenge of the Fallen. Um, that Bumblebee movie was freaking great, though. That's kind of the standard I'd like Transformers to be at, faults and all. Oh, do you know what? It's a lot of fun, but because I've... It's a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score Transformers 1 6.5 out of 10. It's definitely worth a film you should go and support. It is by no means the best Transformers movie of all time, as some people have said. It's an enjoyable ride, though, with beautiful animation and a strong focus on character relationships, particularly between D16 and Orion Pax. The basic plot, however, and lack of dramatic depth hold it back from being truly memorable. While it caters to lifelong fans with plenty of Easter eggs, it doesn't fully embrace the potential for a more mature storytelling experience. If you're a Transformers fan, yeah, it's worth a watch, but don't go in expecting it to redefine the franchise. If you go in just wanting some robots in disguise, an origin story, paper-thin plot, but a good dynamic between the two leads, and just taking it for what it is and not expecting it to be a, a goat level Transformers movie. Yeah, you'll have fun. This is this is a lot of fun. Go and support it. It's one that's worth supporting. Um, but once you have, let me know what you guys think. Tien, shout out to you, mate. I know you wanted me to review this, so I hope this, uh, this you, you enjoy this one. Um, and shout out to all my uh, Transformers fans out there. Uh, let me know who your favorite Transformer is down in the comment section below, Autobot or Decepticon, that I'd be interested to know. As always, there is a uh, subscribe button for you right here, another video for you to watch up here. Go ahead and do all of that goodness and stay tuned to the channel for a slew of movie reviews from the London Film Festival. I'm Nico Lero. bye for now.